on the street where you live. You recognize it? Yes. It's elementary, my dear viewer. The man who's recently assumed the mantle of Sherlock Holmes with enormous success. Welcome, Jeremy Brett. <laughs> Well, he is have been kind to you. Was that, was that you singing? Everything except the top notes. I sang it quietly in the film because I thought I'd wake the street up. I made Snake a cookie crumble. Early days, that was, of course, of your career. Sixties. Yes. And Audrey Hepburn. Wonderful. She's been on the show, too. Terrific. Oh, she's easy to sing to. Yeah. Easy to be in love with her. Yes, it was a lovely part, of course. Freddie, Freddie Einsford Hill. Freddie the Einsford Hill, the chinless one. Now, what about you? Do you come from a theatrical family? Was that your background? No, my... My father was a soldier. My mother was a Quaker, half Quaker, half Irish. And um, my father was quite shocked, really, when I wanted to go into the business. Not shocked, he was disturbed, because I don't think he knew much about it. Yeah. Well, I think he wanted a soldier in the family. Yeah. And uh, he didn't come and see me for four years. And then eventually I was playing a soldier in the theatre of the Manchester Library Theatre and I rang my mother and I said I'd love to borrow my father's boots, his army boots, his cavalry boots, to wear in the play. And about a week later they arrived in a great big cardboard box with straw burnished, polished. And he'd signed, he'd really put my name on it, but he hadn't put a note. About four or five days later I was in the play and my mother rang me and said, uh, be very good tonight, because I don't think your father's got any business in Manchester. And he's going to Manchester, and I think he's coming to see you. And I was absolutely terrified, because he hadn't seen me. So I walked on stage, and I was playing a Prussian soldier, and I had the boots under my trousers, just to kind of touch. And I walked on, I saw him at once. I saw his great chin, his great military chin. He was a magnificent man, tremendously upright. He didn't recognize me. And I didn't speak. But I moved, and he heard the squeak of my boots. And he recognized his boots <laughs> and slowly worked up. And I waited after the show, and he didn't come round. I, I was absolutely heartbroken. I then went back to the digs where I was living, above the Astoria Ballroom. And there on the step was my father sitting with a bottle of champagne and two glasses to say, absolute triumph. So he came round after four years, which was generous. Yeah, well, that was good. Nice to have his support as well. Yes, made they were wonderful. Made you feel parents. a bit more, more comfortable. Well, you had, you were educated at Eton. Was that was yes. that good training for the stage? Well, it's a good education in survival. <laughs> yes. Um, it's quite stark. You go into black. Funnily enough, very much like I wear in Sherlock Holmes. You wear that at the age of thirteen, yes. and you're in mourning for the founder. That's quite a dark colour for the child to be in. I learnt a lot of survival kit and gritting my teeth and thinking of England. But uh, I, I was scared stiff. I didn't really fit. I wanted to be an actor, and uh, that wasn't really encouraged. The huge stiff collar, the old Eton collar. Yes, and you spoke, you see. I don't learn to be so brave. Yes. But I got a, got a kind of locked jaw. Well, well, the upper classes do sleep without opening their eyes. And also, the other thing is, they speak to you over their shoulders. You know, they glance at you. <laughs> and I had, to sort of, I had to kind of break all that down to, to kind of get rid of that. You had a stint in Hollywood after uh, My Fair Lady, didn't you? Yes, I adore what, Hollywood. Was it all that was cracked up to Well, My Fair Lady was Hollywood, and that was very glamorous because it was a big film. But I then went out there. I'd done my stint at the National Theatre, and I thought I really should try and become a movie star. I really wanted to be a cowboy. I know, don't laugh. I mean, I just, I mean I, that's the way life is. I've read too many picture girls. Probably, and I wanted to be a Hollywood cowboy. I thought, well, if I can't be Alan Ladd and Shane, I'll be Jack Palance, I could, whatever. It didn't work out. Yeah. The accent was probably just a little bit wrong. Well, there are very few, few of us left over there. Yes. What, cowboys or people who Well, the, the lots of cowboys were very old Italians. Old Italians. <laughs> and they used to say, do speak again. Yeah. And you say, well, what I've just said is we'd love to hear what you, your, your accent. Yeah. But they didn't really listen to what I was saying. And, of course, it's another country. Yeah. You did theatre out there, though, didn't you? Did you? I mean, was, were the audiences different then? They're wildly enthusiastic. Yeah. I mean, what is wonderful about the Americans is the fact that they are so enthusiastic. Yeah. And they really lift you. And if they like you, 
And I, I did one play. I played. I was the West Coast Dracula. And um, they really took to it. And it was the most thrilling time, because they, they, they are much more responsive than we are. Yes. This audience is, is tremendously responsive. <laughs> They are out there somewhere, Joe. <laughs> yes, I see them now. And while well, you're about to tour in Sherlock Holmes, which, of course, you've made your own on the television. Well, I don't think I ever make it my own. I think everyone's Sherlock Holmes, actually. Everybody here. I mean, it's, it's one of them people. Yeah. I mean, do you like the man? Do you like Sherlock Holmes himself? <sighs> well, I was scared of him to begin with. But my great mentor in this business, Laurence Olivier, uh, gave me a lot of courage many years ago when I was at the National. I mean, once he said to me, I expect every actor who works with me to have the body of a god and uh, the voice of a full orchestra. And there he was doing it. I mean, that's what was so sensational. He had, you had the example there before you. I mean, he's, he's the greatest actor that's ever lived, I believe. And I had that momentum behind me. So when the chips were down, and I thought, God, so many people have played this part. I mean, how, what chance have I? I remembered him. And his, he's rather like both of them. He goes at it. And um, that got me through. It was Larry, really, that got me through. Are you... You're more like Watson, though, really, personally, than you are Sherlock Holmes yourself. Well, I think... <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, you're a kindlier soul yourself. I find than... Holmes incredibly difficult to wear. Hmm. Holmes is a lovely person, I think. And but, a, a kind of person you'd want to be with. When you say wear, you take on... Yes, the mantle of him. He is a dark, recluse, internal creature. And you can only show him through cracks in the marble, glimmers. Yes. You can't... He's totally internal. And I find that's very hard to sustain. I mean, it's much more fun to be watching. to say, Well done! Well done, Holmes! Gosh, that was wonderful, excellent! Yeah. Because he's got that wonderful kind of enthusiasm. Yeah. Holmes is quite cool yes, he is. and dismissive and abrupt. And that's hard to sustain on a daily basis. The last